there's a set of nodes that you may not be familiar with that might make your life a bit more convenient when trying to adjust attributes. If we type in adjust, we have adjust color, dictionary, float, integer, vector, all of these attribute adjust nodes. And they're really handy because they basically offer simple operations that you used to do in Vops. And so it kind of removes a lot of that tediousness of let's say adding saturation or contrast to a set of values. As an example, we have this tombstone right here and I'm going to use the attribute adjust color. By default, we're going to have everything turn white because this adjustment value is set to set always and a constant of white. So it just set the color to 111, essentially. But what's really cool about this is that we can go ahead and change this from a constant to a random, a noise. We can have a color attribute. There's all kinds of options right here for how we want to adjust color. So I'll get to this pattern type here in a minute. Also, take a look at the operation dropdown. We have subtract, multiply, overlay, screen. It's nice having some of these options right here because they match up what you might be used to in Photoshop. And so if you wanna see the code for all this stuff, we can actually dive in here. And as an example, we have this adjust color that has the pre-process in it, that has the adjust value, all kinds of different things. So if you wanna go digging through the actual VEX code, then that might also be useful in and of itself. But anyway, going back to our tombstone example here, I'll go ahead and say multiply white so that nothing changes here at first. Let's go further down. We have color correction, post process, and attribute properties towards the bottom. What's really cool is this enable color correction where we can change the hue like that. Again, that changes the color. We have the saturation, makes those colors more vibrant. A value which will brighten things up. Brightness like that, contrast, gain, and gamma. So all of these settings right here are very, very convenient. Again, before you had to do a bunch of VOP work or maybe you had to code this in VEX to affect the values in this kind of way. So that's really, really nice. Now suppose that I only want to affect a certain area of this tombstone. Well, we have a few options for that in this pattern type. So I'll say set always, we'll go with a green right here. And then for the pattern type, I'll go ahead and use line. And check this out. We have a line that's drawn out in our viewport. And as I change this line, it's going to create a gradient based off of where I draw. And so actually I could just draw directly in the viewport like this and the ramp changes right here. So this is very useful if you want some kind of gradient of values as well. If you want to, let's say, have a radial fall off, we could do a radial fall off right here as well, kind of this circle shape. We can also use the bounding box with a specific direction. So as an example, here's the direction in Y. I'll go ahead and click this compute range and well, we can say that in Y, we can say that in X, in Z. There's all kinds of directions you can pick with this. But having the ability to define attributes like this is very, very powerful. Because again, before you had to go through a lot to actually get this nice distribution of values. You might also find this node useful for pre-processing information. So we can delete all existing color attributes right here and then overwrite the initial color with something else. We can pick this from a different attribute right here. So if we wanted P scale to define the color somehow or a separate color attribute or something else, we can do that with the overwrites. And down here in the post process, we can specify minimums, maximums. We can also do a complement color so that we switch it over to the opposite uh, hue as well as black and white values that 
the collar was in. So that's really cool. And towards the bottom here, we have a couple of miscellaneous parameters when it comes to the default value in the type qualifier. This default value will essentially allow this color to show up if you ever merge this geometry with another piece of geometry that doesn't have color yet. So again, if you merge this with something else, the thing that doesn't have a CD attributes will default to this right here. And the type qualifier is used to basically dictate how transforms are processed if you decide to transform this. So most of the time, you don't need to worry about that at all. These two guys at the bottom are certainly more miscellaneous in nature. But uh, let me show you one more thing that's really cool. We can also go here and use a color map. So if I say set always, we can see that we now have a mandrel showing up on our tombstone. The uh, UVs are a bit off, but you can see that this is a texture map, which is really neat. And if we go here to our operation, we can overlay that, we can add it, we can subtract. We have all of our normal Photoshop filters that you might be used to using, which is super cool because that allows you to take multiple texture images and blend them together in a way that affects attributes on your geometry. And lastly, I want you guys to know that this doesn't just apply to color. It applies to float attributes, vector attributes. Technically, color is a vector attribute, so you could use this node to affect data like velocity. Even though it's not necessarily color, it is vector data that you can adjust using all of these different settings. But, like I said before towards the beginning, all you do is type in adjust and you can find all those different attribute types in here. So, an adjust float, as an example, will still have all of our pattern types in here, the operations are still there, and all of that is pretty much good to go. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com, where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.